Welcome back everyone. This is the State of the Nation now with a lot of geopolitical influence going around. Tonight I want to focus on one individual who is quite prominent in shaping the future of our nation. It's none other than uh, Victoria Jane Newland, the United States Under Secretary for Political Affairs. Even though we've attributed a lot of influence of the United States spread uh, by the current ambassador Julie Chung here in Sri Lanka, it is vital that we understand who the real puppet master is, which many say is Victoria Newland. Who is she? What's her goal? And where sh does she want to take this nation to? In every instance, please keep in mind that Victoria Newland is working for her nation, the United States of America. Now, in Western media, she is dubbed the undiplomatic diplomat. This was uh, after a leaked audio conversation back in 2014 where she uttered the words F the EU with regards to the Ukraine war, which I played, I think, about a couple of weeks back. Uh, indeed, if you were asking Ukraine war back in 2014, yep, Ukraine was at war at that time as well, and thanks to Victoria Nuller. And if you thought that Vladimir Putin is a monster and is uh, doing everything to further the power of Russia in the world and actually pushing the Russian Federation to good old days of the Soviet Union, then meet her US counterpart, Victoria Newland, who is equally evil and deadly, not just to America, but to the rest of the world as well. Victoria Newland, the current US Secretary of State for Political Affairs, is struck, uh, stuck in the old um, ideological days of 1950s where US-Russia cold war politics and dreams of continued NATO expansion and arms race on steroids and further encirclement of Russia and a possible escalation with China to keep America as a global superpower. She's working hard for that. Now how dangerous is Victoria Newland? And some interesting people showed up at the protests, including then-Senator John McCain, who was the head of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee at the time, um, Victoria Newland. Victoria Newland is like handing out cookies to people. We have pictures of them meeting with these opposition figures who are very much calling for the government to be overturned and that the tra trade agreement be signed with the EU. Then in February, there is a phone call that mm -hmm. is leaked and it's between, like you said, Victoria Newland, the lady handing out the cookies from the State Department, and our then ambassador to Ukraine, <laughs> Jeffrey Pyatt. And so in that call, she says, as you alluded to, Yachts is the guy, Arseniy Yachts and Yuk is the guy. And she says, Biden is willing. And everybody focused on the EU instead of focusing on the main point of this, which is like we're planning a, a change in a government of a different country. Well, that was a clip from a podcast uh, from journalist Jennifer Briney, who has extensively uh, investigated about Victoria Newland back in the past, and she has come forward in order to expose all what she has been doing thus far. Now, Victoria Newland represents neocons who leads U.S. foreign policy. This has, this has landed America trillions in debt to be paid by ordinary American citizens. Victoria Newland holds the third highest position in the State Department. When the U.S. attacked Afghanistan, Newland was the permanent representative of NATO from 2000 to 2003. She ensured U.S. and NATO establish bases and remain in Afghanistan to tap into its natural resources. When the U.S. attacked Iraq, Newland was a foreign policy advisor in the years 2003 to 2005 to then Vice President Dick Cheney. She planned and managed the war that toppled Saddam Hussein and made a case regarding bogus weapons of mass destruction. Then the U.S. went on to occupy Iraq and over one million Iraqis are dead and thousands suffering post-traumatic stress. These were all collateral for Newland, who was more interested in security, economic and political interest that benefits the United States. Newland continued as U.S. envoy to NATO from 2005 to 2008, where she coordinated allied support in Afghanistan and Iraq. Her boss, Dick Cheney, was the former CEO of Halliburton, who was given $39.5 billion in federal contracts related to the Iraqi war and one of the profiteers of the U.S. occupation in Iraq. 
When the U.S. decided to liberate the Libyans from Gaddafi in 2011, Victoria Nuland was a State Department spokesperson under Hillary Clinton, who is famous for laughing at the death of Gaddafi, where she said, we came, we saw, he died. The nation that had the highest standard of living in Africa is today a failed state, thanks to the mastermind of Victoria Nuland. When Gaddafi was toppled in 2011, Nuland next eyed Syria. In January of 2012, she claimed the U.S. was on the side of those wanting peace will change in Syria. The Libyan arms were passed on to insurgents to overthrow the Syrian government. The U.S. went on to supply sniper rifles, grenades and missiles to the peaceful protesters. And at that time, Newland worked very hard to justify regime change operations in both Iraq and Syria. Noteworthy is the pattern and rhetoric related to peaceful protesters in Libya, Syria, Ukraine and after that here in Sri Lanka as well. Now the US regime change strategy follows a pattern. It's a very simple pattern. First, the US backs peaceful protesters. Then the US criticizes the local government for a disproportionate response. Then the US exerts pressure not to take action to that government while increasing support for proxy protesters. After paving the way by instigating the war in many Middle Eastern countries, Victoria Nuland eyed Ukraine. When Nuland became Assistant Secretary of State for European and Eurasian Affairs in September of 2013, it's noteworthy that the manner uprisings began soon after her arrival in Ukraine. Ukraine had to decide uh, to accept an IMF loan, which meant a 40% increase in natural gas bills, or accept a Russian loan with cheap oil and gas. The opposition of Ukraine wanted the IMF loan. This was when the February 2014 audio recording of uh, Newland talking to the US uh, envoy to Ukraine, Jeffrey Pryor, was leaked. That's where she said, F the EU. Clearly, Newland was interfering in Ukraine's internal affairs. She was directly meeting opposition leaders and managing the protest. The reason I was talking about the Ukraine issue in 2014 is because that coup was very much similar to what took place here in Sri Lanka. Many say that Newland has been in the thick of US foreign policy covering coups, proxy wars, aggression occupations to even sniper killings. With all the above records, uh, when, you, um, when Newland arrives twice in one year to Sri Lanka, one has to wonder not only why, but what she is up to. The first time she came and met with former President Gotabi Rajpaksa, he became a wimp and fled the country. The second time, well, we had to wait and see as to how that will play out. Right now, many believe and were read on social media that the push by Newland is to set up a military base here by possibly pushing the AXA agreement, which was rejected by former President Rajpaksa's government back in 2019. Why do they need a military base here? basically to prep their war efforts for a possible escalation with China. Now the arrival of high-level military personnel of the US government backed up by the interfering uh, diplomacy of the current US ambassador here in Sri Lanka, uh, it looks like that the US, especially Victoria Nuland, wants Sri Lanka to be in her corner. Most Colombo liberals and their fellow minions will never understand when someone from here says that she's bad news. After all, they all drunk the Newland Kool-Aid too much. But hopefully they will listen to someone who is from the United States itself. Joining me now uh, from Los Angeles, California via Zoom is Marcy Vinograd, who is the coordinator of Code Pink, a nonprofit fighting for peace. She is a longtime uh, anti-war activist. Marcy also served as a Democratic National Committee delegate to Bernie Sanders in the 2020 presidential election. Marcy, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to me. Uh, to give our viewers uh, an understanding, explain to us, Marcy, uh, what your organization's uh, key focus is. Thank you so much, Mahesh, for inviting me on State of the Nation. It's a great honor to be with you and your viewers today. I am, as you said, an organizer with Code Pink. This is an organization led by women that began in the run-up to the U.S. invasion of Iraq to object to that, to object to the occupation and the many wars that the United States has launched in an effort to remain the global power, the superpower of the world. We believe that there should be equal rights for all in Israel, Palestine. We have a campaign to cut the Pentagon budget 
which is now nearly a trillion dollars with 750 military bases, U.S. military bases around the world. And I would urge all of those watching to oppose any establishment of a military base in Sri Lanka. Marcy, uh, listening to what you just said, uh, I, uh, I understand that your organization is a very liberal, progressive organization wo working specially for women's rights. Then how come you say that Victoria Newland, the current U.S. Under Secretary, for, uh, Secretary of State for Political Affairs, is bad news? And why do you want her fired from her position? Victoria Newland is really like the poster child for the neoconservatives who Mahish have been pushing for remaking the world in the image of the United States for decades. Uh, she was an advisor to Vice President Dick Cheney, the architect of the U.S. occupation, the U.S. invasion of Iraq. She sold the uh, occupation, the U.S. occupation of Afghanistan to Europe, said, come on board, you know, we can win this. 20 years later, the United States withdrew from Afghanistan. It is broke. We have stolen its money. People are facing starvation. She also supported the, uh, the coup in Ukraine in 2014. Now, this was a pivotal point, right? Uh, we have to go back in history and look at what was the U.S. role in Ukraine? How did we end up in this position where we are facing a U.S.-Russia proxy war with the two most heavily armed nuclear nations of the world threatening World War III. Victoria Nuland was right there in Ukraine at the Maidan Square encouraging the overthrow of the democratically elected president. She engineered the transition government. She was recorded on a phone call saying F the EU, the European Union, should they oppose who she chose to run the government, the post-coup government in Ukraine. She was all down for sending arms to Ukraine to arm the civil war that broke out in the aftermath of this coup and that undermined the peace agreement, the Minsk Peace Accord in 2015. And now, Mahish, she is out there campaigning. She's a saleswoman. She is selling U.S. funding attacks, Ukrainian attacks on Crimea. This is really, really dangerous. Crimea, we know, was annexed by Russia in 2014 following this coup out of concern that their naval fleet would be evicted. Okay? Uh, Crimea was part of Russia for nearly 200 years. It's not going anywhere. So this is really a red line for Russia. The U.S., we don't need a direct war with Russia. We don't need any war with Ukraine, with Russia. We need peace. And we want our administration to be in the vanguard pushing for peace talks. It is not. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Masi, we see in this part of the world, which is not much of a focus in America, that Victoria Nuland is prepping Sri Lanka as a location to put up a U.S. military base in a possible escalation with China. Do you think this is another sign of a new war for America? I'm afraid, Mahesh, that that's what those in power in Washington, be they Democrat or Republican, the two major parties in our country, that's what they want. Uh, they want to take on China, which is insane. China, China has a 1.5 billion people. It owns over a trillion dollars of U.S. debt. Uh, it is an industrial giant, the largest exporter in the world, the largest manufacturer of semiconductors. And the United States wants a war with China? Uh, Sri Lanka must not be caught in the crossfire of this insanity. We cannot uh, encourage anyone in Sri Lanka to support the establishment of a U.S. military base. Number one, U.S. military bases are notorious for contaminating the land, the water of the places where these bases are established. So if you want to ruin your land, if you want a super fun site that's like toxic central, uh, then you would want a military base. But by and large, the larger picture is we don't want Sri Lanka to be a pawn in a U.S war with China for global hegemony. China is emerging as a, as a peacekeeper, you know, having just negotiated a peace agreement between Iran and Saudi Arabia, having offered a peace platform for resolving the war in Ukraine. What is the U.S. doing? It's sending $10 billion of weapons to Taiwan to prepare for a war with China. What is the U.S. doing? The U.S. is goading Ukraine to widen this war with China, with, uh, with Russia, rather. It is sending, what, to date, 50 billion and counting in weapons and military assistance, in quotes, 
to Ukraine when anyone, any reasonable person would say, we need to end this war. Let's apply diplomacy, not the weapons of war. That will only increase global insecurity. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Uh, Marcy, if all of us fail to divide this insane hunger towards war by Victoria Nuland, what do you think would happen next? What ha- would happen next is that uh, the United States and China would would face off in a potentially uh, existential threat to the entire globe, right? Both countries are possessors of nuclear weapons. The United States has a nuclear posture review, a nuclear policy that says the United States will use tactical short-range nuclear weapons, any nuclear weapons, in a first strike should our allies' interests be threatened. We've seen Victoria Nuland and the rest of the neoconservatives in the Biden administration and previously in the Trump administration vilifying China and setting us on a trajectory for a war with China. This is disastrous. Sri Lanka should have no part of this. I ask the leaders of Sri Lanka to shun the likes of Victoria Nuland and Samantha Power and Jake Sullivan and Antony Blinken for neoconservatives in the Biden administration who are leading this drive for war with China. We have to say no. We have to say no in the United States. And we stand in solidarity. Code Pink stands in solidarity with the Sri Lankans who say, no, we're not going to be part of this war with China and the United States. We will not allow a U.S. military base on our land. Leave now. Absolutely. Indeed, leave now, Masi. Despite you knowing, living and understanding the dangers of such women from the United States itself, it's a long way until our people really come to their senses. It's a sad story here, but I hope it will be a positive one in the days to come. Thank you very much. That was the coordinator of Code Pink in the U.S., uh, Masi Binokrat. Let's get another perspective on this story. Joining me now is Daya Gamage, who is a retired Foreign Service National Political Specialist of the U.S. Department of State with over 25 years of experience. He is accredited to the political section of the American Embassy in Sri Lanka. He joins me now via Zoom from Las Vegas. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gamage, for taking the time to speak to me. Now, what are the key intentions of the United States in Sri Lanka? Is it to form a military base, uh, taking advantage of Sri Lanka's uh, weak economic status and doing whatever they want to do? Actually, Mahesh, uh, the question can be uh, divided into two. First is that see the the amount of people who came from Washington. Deputy Secretary of uh, Political Affairs of the State Department, Victoria Newland the second highest ranking foreign policy person in the State Department. In February, she arrived here. This was her second visit within uh, one year. Then came again the CIA director, US CIA director, William Burns came here uh, two weeks ago. Then on February 27th, that is very important, This uh, two weeks ago, February 27th, the Kotaral Defense University participating uh, partnership with the American uh, Embassy uh, launched a publication uh, entitled the Sh- Shared Vision for the Indo-Pacific Implications for South Asia and discussed the U.S. Indo-Pacific strategy. So these are the th- first th- the things that you know that that happened really during this time. Now, why are these things really happening? Because you know because they have already identified Sri Lanka as a m- 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 located in a very strategic position in the Indo-Pacific region, right in the middle. So, uh, so uh, that that's also, all these things started really when exactly a year ago, February 22, uh, February 20, uh, 2022, the Biden administration released its long-awaited Indo-Pacific strategy. Previously in June 2019, the U.S. Defense Department unveiled the Indo-Pacific Strategy Report in which Nepal, along with Sri Lanka, was added to the United States uh, partnership program in the Indo-Pacific. So these are the, these are the things that, 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 that happened really when all these people came, really. Hopefully, hopefully. Uh, I hope a lot of people will come to their senses very soon. Thank you. Uh, that was a retired foreign na- uh, service national political specialist of the USGI Department of State, Diane Gamage. Um, 
Let's take a short commercial break. This is the State of the Nation. I'll be back with a closer.